to the Gay Liberation Network here on Chicago Access Network Television. I'm your host, Andy Thayer, and with us tonight is Maria Hernandez from Black Lives Matter Chicago. Maria, thank you so much for coming down today. Maria pinch hit the last minute, and we're so happy to have her here. Um, thank you for helping out. You've been very involved in the No Cop Academy movement. Could you say a few words about what do you mean by No Cop Academy? Um, well, thanks for having me on here. Um, well, I mean, first of all, um, the, the largest part of the No Cop Academy campaign is that we need to invest in our communities. Um, the city spends magnitudes more on policing than it does on the kind of social services that can actually prevent crime in the first place by removing the cause for them, such mm -hmm. as employment and things like that. And we're going to get into the statistics about that in just a moment, but before we do so, I'd like to get some announcements up on your screen here. Um, first of all, uh, in order to get in touch with uh, Black Lives Matter Chicago, please check out their website, uh, which is on your screen there. Uh, and Black Lives Matter has been enormously, enormously active here in the city, uh, whether active around Laquan McDonald case, uh, Dante Servin, the cop who he killed, uh, was it Laquan? Laquan. Laquan? Oh, that's oh, Rakia Boy. Rakia Dante, Boy. Yes, 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 yes. And any number of other uh, important cases that speak to the fact that the city of Chicago doesn't value black lives, and hence the term Black Lives Matter. You know, we have uh, others who talk about, um, oh, what about all lives? What's your response to that nonsense? Well, if, if all lives matter, then black lives should matter, right? Yes, yeah. yes. But unfortunately, the city of Chicago, uh, for all the, uh, the black people who've been murdered in this town by police, um, has failed to criminally prosecute almost every single one of those officers, with the exception of when there has been sustained protest thanks to people like uh, Maria here. Um, I'd like to do, uh, get into some of these announcements and then we'll get into the conversation about No Cop Academy. Um, first, uh, the Eighth Day Center for Justice having it, their annual um, Good Friday Walk for Justice. That is 12 noon, March 30th, starting at Michigan and uh, Congress Parkways. Please check that out. And then uh, coming up also, we have got a big anti-war march on Saturday, April 21st, again starting at Michigan and Congress. This is a warm-up act to the 50th anniversary of the Chicago's 1968 Democratic Convention here in Chicago, where both parties then, as well as both parties today, were pro-war and doing anything they could to promote those wars. And so we find it very important to be involved in this. Um, I mentioned that we were going to start with some statistics. There's a spreadsheet for you. Let's d dial in on it. There are over 650 cities across the United States that have got more than 50,000 people in them. Of those 650 cities, Chicago ranks number three in the cops per capita, the cops per civilian. And yet we've got a huge violence problem here. We've already got far more cops per capita than any other city in the United States with the exception of DC and Baltimore. So when people say we gotta hire more cops, that should tell you something. A few of our quick statistics here. 40% uh, of Chicago's operational budget is spent on police already, even before the $95 million that uh, Maria's gonna be talking about with the No Cop Academy. Also, each new officer costs $137,000 per year in salary and benefits. Just to start with, that's junior officers. That statistic I just gave you, Chicago number three in the nation in number of cops per civilians, uh, the ratio there. And then finally, one quarter uh, of the pop we one quarter of the population of New York and LA combined, and yet we had twice as many murders. So all those cops that we've got, are they really doing anyone any good except for the FOP, of course? So, Maria, tell us about the movement for No Cop Academy, what you've been doing and what, what this controversy, controversy is all about. Um, well, thank you. So, the 
It all started on July 4th last year when Rahm Emanuel announced that this academy was being planned. Um, of course, at a time when people would not be paying attention. Um, and the campaign was really launched by the youth, who in Chicago, the youth have been powerful leaders demanding financing for their education, um, demanding safety, um, and um, just resources uh, so that they can grow up. It has, they, you know, they were doing train takeovers, and it's expanded. You know, we've gone after city council relentlessly, um, trying to get more support. Um, Chance the Rapper's even gotten involved. Um, and despite the clear outcry from citizens of the West Side, residents of the West Side, city council still voted in October 40, was it 48 or 49 to 1? It's 49 to 1. 49 yeah. to 1 to, um, not to build it, but mm -hmm. to buy the land. Um, so there's a process of getting to where we can actually, to Hello. where we'll actually build it. Um, and this, this month, they're going to be voting, we think, on uh, the contractor to actually break ground for this project. Um, now, one of the most atrocious parts of it is that the way the city has been able to propose, plan, approve, and potentially build a project of this scale overnight is by exploiting um, racist zoning categories called planned manufacturing districts. Okay. Um, they're the reason that we see larger environmental pollution in communities of color, low-income communities, and immigrant communities. Um, basically, the way it, the zoning, what the zoning allows is for less input from the community okay. about what's, what happens there. Um, so they're really trying to cut people's voices out. So a huge part of my work, personally, has been um, with the canvassing team on the west side. We've actually been going door to door. We've been standing on the trains. We've been calling voters, talking to people about the police academy. And what we found, it's really, it, it, it should be shocking, but to me, as someone who lives on the west side, it's not. 80% of the people who right. live within a mile of the, of the academy, of the, academy, of the, of the proposed academy, of the proposed academy, of the folks we've talked to so far, which are hundreds and growing, 80% of them have no idea that it's being built. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, just a few years ago, the city shuttered half of its mental health clinics, right. over $3 million. Mm -hmm. So where is this money coming from is the big, big question. Yeah, yeah, and and this is the same city that plows all sorts of money into into uh, TIF projects. We were just at uh, a hearing this morning about fifteen point eight million dollars for luxury high rises in the uptown neighborhood. We're trying to nix. Uh, I'm going to switch. We got a caller coming in here uh, uh, for our control team. Can you get a caller on here, please. Good evening, Andy. Good evening. Give me Good have evening. to be brief because we got a short show tonight, but please go you ahead. Got it. Hello, Maria. You're doing a great job for the community, sweetheart. Thank you. If you ever have any trouble in your neighborhood, there's an old group to call called the Guardian Angels. They are out of this world to help you with anything that you need. But back to you, Andy, with the guns. Mm -hmm. Guns. Too many guns. Mm -hmm. We got to get the aldermen's. We got to get the right governor. We got to that, get that mad again. She dropped the ball I don't know how many times mm -hmm. with the codes of the police. Voting time is coming up. It's very important to vote for somebody that's in your community. I come out of the 41st ward. I'm voting all the time. I wish I was in your ward. I'd help you the best I can. But as far as the guns go, we got a big problem. Let's just hope to God after the voting time, somebody will step up to the plate and help us because we know where it's all coming from. It don't matter if you have a license, you got a license, she got a license, if somebody's going to get a gun, they got to get a gun, so you got to protect yourself. Always walk with a group of people, keep a cold cream jar and a sock, and if anybody comes from behind you, swing that sock. Do you understand? Yeah, well, we've got a, an issue with cops with guns, don't we, Maria? We do. Um, and a huge, a huge issue of police violence in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, now I, I know um, for myself, I've heard so many stories of people in my neighborhood who've been assaulted by police and it was never reported. They were never charged mm -hmm. with a crime. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will say, you know, it's only a couple miles, like a mile and a half from this police academy to Home and Square where torture mm -hmm. was happening. That's we right. We still have... Uh, torture, police torture victims, CPD torture victims who are incarcerated Ill illegitimately because of convictions that came from torture. Yeah. Um, 
And while we have not seen the city demonstrate the, any real changes in how they're going to train people, um, we are seeing that they want to spend all this money on a training academy. Well, and that brings up a very important point, Maria, because I have, over the decades, heard about any number of trainings specifically aimed at the town hall police district uh, in, quote, unquote, Boys Town, mm -hmm. aimed at trying to have LGBT-friendly trainings of these officers. And yet, year in, year out, the biggest number of complaints about anti-LGBT actions by police officers came right out of that damned area. And it was actually a gay cop who's no longer mm. there who was the focus of most. The, the old phrase, black cop showing off for the white cop. Well, this is the gay cop showing off for the straight cops. Absolutely. And the mm. issue becomes if you pay out millions and millions of dollars each year to these officers who are brutal and you promote them like John Burge mm. and any number of others officers, uh, in the words of, of Leroy Martin, who was police superintendent back in the day, as to why they promote these so-called repeater beaters, he said in the Sun-Times, quote, they show a lot of enthusiasm for the job. And mm. so training isn't going to do it. You got to discipline the officers you got. And we got way too many already. Yes, we need accountability. Um, from the police and we need investment in the community. One of the things that I've heard people such as Alderman Mitz who mm -hmm. is actually this is in her ward mm -hmm. um, One of the things she says is that the police need to be trained to deal with opiate crisis to deal with mental illness to deal with things that we actually have whole segments whole agencies that are supposed to be dealing with this, as well as many partners who are in the professionals community. Who are already trained. Already trained, and yet we refuse, as a city, we refuse to invest in these things. And I actually asked her, um, if, if the issue is more training for the opiate crisis, why not invest in substance abuse resources? Right, right. She told me, and this was at one of her ward nights where anyone can go have a one-on-one -on -one with her, she told me that there's enough substance abuse treatment centers in Garfield Park. What they need is mental health centers. She voted to shut the health centers, the mental health centers down. Exactly. And so it's it's these kind of like e evasive evasive answers and just, just n not hitting the nail on the head answers when we ask about the things we need to stem the violence and then insisting that police are going to be the answer. Now, if police can't be trained to use or not use their gun properly, their taser properly, their body cams properly, what's to make us think that they're going to be able to handle medical emergencies? Yes, and is a $95 million cop academy complete with swimming pool and other amenities that school children in our town don't get? Mm -hmm. Is that going to change things or just pamper these people who are not being disciplined in the first place? I, and not only is it pampering people who aren't being disciplined in the first place, it's being used by the city, especially by the mayor's office, as um, it's a really perverse interpretation of the DOJ report, for which Rahm Emanuel continues to refuse to sign a consent decree to say that they demanded more training. They demanded changes in the training before any brick-and-mortar investments like this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for instance, the swimming pool's a great example. That's supposedly to help train the Marine team. Mm -hmm. how, is, how is the Marine team... What does the Marine team have to do with um, people being beaten or shot 16 times or being taken off the grid to places like Home and Square? How, how is the Marine team really the, the number one investment we need to be making to address this? Yeah, yeah, and all that money they're already shelling out in terms of settlements and jury verdicts is money that could be going into things like libraries that actually have got hours that, that are uh, ones that allow kids to have some after-school activities and so forth. Anyone who knows anything about library hours knows that if you're working, for example, there are basically two days a week and go to the library for a little while on Saturday, a little bit on Thursday night or Wednesday night, mm -hmm. and, and the rest of it's been all wiped out because because we're spending money on police. Mm -hmm. And in this neighborhood in particular, um, it's been very difficult for us as a community group to find spaces to meet um, because we, we, contact, we, we contact restaurants. They don't have seating because it's not safe. Mm -hmm. uh, the libraries close early. Uh, it's just there's, there's not, there are not public spaces for people to go. And as we've been talking to other community members, that's the number one thing people have asked for is investment in the youth, either in the schools or in youth centers, community centers, a place for these kids to go besides the corner where they're going to be profiled by police right. and treated like a criminal whether they are or not. Right, right. Um, I want to, uh, we do have a caller, but the caller you're going to have to be really brief because we're running out of time here. Let's see if we can get them on the air, our folks in the control room here. 
Yes. Hi. So uh, briefly, I recently heard a police officer friend of mine say that he would rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6, meaning that, you know, part of the justification for the brutality is that the officers find the priority in making it home safely to their families, which is why sometimes they shoot first and ask questions later. And I just kind of wanted to get your response to that line of thought or that mentality. Maria? Yes, um, I definitely, you know, as a, as a person who, a female-bodied person who has to walk home late at night in these neighborhoods, I definitely know the feeling of, like, worrying about your life. Not in the same way as a police officer. I'm not running into crime scenes all the time. Um, but, I mean, if we're going to invest money in training these people, I'm not sure. Um, I have not seen at any point that the police are being trained to de-escalate situations. Precisely. Um, and if they have been trained to do it, I'm not seeing that they are being doing it. They have been doing it or that they've been reprimanded for not doing it or held accountable beyond reprimanding, like really held accountable for not doing it. And so it's it. what happens is that these police officers who are treated like an asset to the community, um, their lives are valued so much higher than ours that a simple fear allows them to kill someone. Why do you need to shoot? Why, why are you unable to disarm? Why are you unable to negotiate? You know, we see time and time again when a person shoots a, a movie theater or a church or a school full of people, they are always captured alive unless they kill themselves. Mm -hmm. So how is it that uh, a, a regular citizen with nothing more than a knife cannot be captured alive? I remember being a, a, a small child seeing Amadou Diallo killed over a wallet. It's, it's, you can't possibly a, be a police officer who's this trained and you don't even know what a gun looks like. You know, you it's, know. it's just an excuse. Well, I'm afraid to say that we are running down on time here. Uh, Maria, we're going to have to have you back because I don't feel like we even did this this subject justice. Uh, so Can I make one more comment? Go for it. Go for it. Absolutely. So what we want people to do, and no matter what ward you live in, call your alderman, write your alderman, go to their office, go to community meetings and demand this. This police academy is to be named in honor of a police officer who fell in the line of duty, which no one should ever have to. No lives need to be lost. We want to stop losing lives in Chicago. Um, nonetheless, when you look at the amount of brutality that has been weighted upon black and brown communities, I think it would be easier for the police department if, they're, if they weren't doing the job of these other social services, and it would be better on the community, better for the economics of the city, if we were to invest in a memorial for Laquan McDonald, Thank you. who was from the 37th Ward, Quintonio Legreer, mm -hmm. Betty Jones, who were murdered in that ward, for a mental health emergency, investing in the kind of services that would take the extra work off the cop's plate because they shouldn't be doing the work of a social worker or a mental health worker. And investing in those things in honor of the lives that have fallen in that community would be a much better way to stop the violence, stem the violence, and actually reinvigorate a, an area with so much history. In our cities, neighborhoods that have been most deprived. Yes. Most deprived. That's what this $95 million could do. So we're going to have to shut it off here. Uh, just some really quick announcements here. Again, check out Black Lives Matter, blacklivesmatterchicago.com. Also, uh, we have uh, the No Cop Academy. Check them out that Maria and so many other organizations, including Gay Liberation Network, are very happy to support. And also check out the uh, 8th Day Center for Justice, Good Friday March for Justice on March 30th at uh, 12 noon at the corner of Michigan and Congress. And then the big anti-war march coming up on Saturday, tw uh, April 21st at 12 noon. Again, Thank you so much for being with us tonight, Maria Hernandez, Black Lives Matter Chicago. This is Andy Thayer signing off tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks.